Um, good morning, everyone. It's really fantastic to be here today with candidate for Bass, Jordan Crignale, and Mayor Pamela Rothfield to talk about the extensive investment, the record-breaking investment in regional roads. A total of $941 million is going into upgrade and maintenance uplift of our roads across regional Victoria. We know that we need to continue to put this money in to make sure that our roads are safe, can accommodate additional traffic, and that the money goes to where it needs to go. We will in fact be taking regional roads back into regional hands with a base in Ballarat for Regional Roads Victoria and the regional roads being uh, reported to from our regional offices with Vic Roads offices continuing to be part of that. Under the former government what we saw was a 65% cut in maintenance, upgrade and resurfacing in their final budget and they slashed 450 jobs from Vic Roads. We're making up that particular shortfall and then some with four record budgets investing in new road infrastructure, in better, safer roads and in safety measures that improve the road experience for people as our population grows. As part of this record investment, we also have infrastructure that will be going into making sure that more parts of regional Victoria are better able to accommodate uh, congestion and traffic flow. And one of the things that I'm delighted to announce today is that just shy of $9.7 million from the 1819 Andrews Labor Government budget will be going into a dual lane roundabout on Phillip Island, at Phillip Island Road and Back Beach Road. We know that this is an area which as a T intersection at the moment has been the site of numerous casualty collisions. It's an area where people consistently find themselves at a standstill when uh, traffic is at its peak during the summer months and for particular events that are uh, very popular on the calendar for the island. And that this is something we've been working on along with Jordan and the Basco Shire Council since 2015 to remedy. This investment of $9.7 million will enable us to acquire land, to do the preliminary works, to consult and engage with community and to get this done with works beginning from 2019. Really happy to take any questions, but we are really proud of the work that we're putting in to investing in regional roads. $66 million for Gippsland Roads, an additional infrastructure spend of $9.7 million for the Phillip Island Roundabout, an additional grant-based uh, structure of $100 million for councils, regional councils, to be able to apply for funding for projects that are specific to their areas. We need to be better than what we've been previously. We need to continue to drive down the road toll. We're continuing to invest in wire rope safety barriers, in uh, additional uh, changes to the road environment to accommodate the interface between uh, cars, trucks, buses and also trains, particularly in regional level crossing areas. So this work will get underway uh, as soon as the budget goes through and it builds on the impressive record of work that we've already put into areas such as the Highland Highway uh, and round through Wonthaggy, Corrumburra and down into South Gippsland all the way up to the Princess Highway East. It's a big investment, we're really proud of it and we're looking forward to getting on with the work. Thank you. All right, Ms. Hardiford, tell me about this particular roundabout. What are the issues residents are facing? What's the community concern? This is one of the roundabouts on Phillip Island. Um, it's part of the major tourist road and it's, for, um, it's, it's, quite, it's very dangerous. It's a T intersection. So people going to and from the Nobbies, to and from the Penguin Parade, to and from the racetrack, and even the local townships dot along the way. It is a really dangerous corner. And this is something that council has been advocating and working towards and the state government for a number of years now. Um, we want people to come to the area, you know, drive and drive on safely um, to actually admire the natural wonders that we have um, on Phillip Island and the Bass Coast. Perfect. And how pleased are you to see these works while this announced this money finally going towards this roundabout? I'm over the moon. <laughs> it's um, one of those investments that, you know, the first roundabout was funded in the last budget, this one is funded in this budget. Um, it's, you know, the island is, is one of our absolute treasures in the area and it means people can travel safely um, in and out of Phillip Island and there's been a number of casualties and um, accidents on that road and there's one step to that road. Because it's a one way in and out, obviously there'll be a lot of congestion while the works are going ahead. Um, that's going to be that to the road. If there's only the school on the island, so it's going to be out. Sorry, what was this? Yeah. 
So in terms of congestion while it's while construction's underway, we'll be managing traffic flow as the traffic continues to move throughout the period of construction. The first step is the land acquisition though, and that will then enable us to build dual lanes for the roundabout whilst the traffic continues to flow. So the whole purpose of changing the T intersection to a roundabout is that we'll actually be able to do that and manage traffic flow at the same time. Yes, it's throughout the whole period of construction. Yes. I think that's what you've got to look at. The end game is to have a safer commute for our for our locals and our visitors, and that's really what we're focusing on. And again, this is a perfect example of support from this government. They, um, I just continually see these investments in our region, and it's wonderful. We've got the most amazing local representatives here, uh, and you you know them, but uh, we see this continual support, and we're so grateful for it. They're locals. They are absolute feet on the ground people. These reps here, and that's Harriet and, and Jordan and we are so grateful to have them.